Chairkoff David Rosa, Vivian Ballard, Michelle Thomason, Julie Kuschnick, Derek Rich, and Amy Donovan, and they will be followed by Candace Sabo, Tessa Hunt, Lori uh, Agold Rich, Laura Corman, Gaia Brooks, and Sydney Casey. David Rosa? My name is David Rosa. I'm Daniel's father. I'm from Senate District 26 on 4SB1. I represent myself and the Silent No More Awareness Campaign. I also am an Orthodox Catholic. Senators, what is the moral difference between what Dr. Gosnell did to a baby born alive at 23 weeks and aborting her moments before her birth? I participated in my first abortion in 1989 when my girlfriend who I was having an adulterous affair with became pregnant with another man. I knew I could not allow myself to be the father of an illegitimate child. However, since I wanted to continue my physical relationship with this young woman, I told her, I would be the man that the father's baby could not be, and I helped her with her decision to abort the unwanted child. I remember everything about that day. I watched as she slowly walked from the death room of the abortuary. Before we got in the car, she started to vomit, and she told me she had acute abdominal pain. She was bleeding, but they told her that was to be expected. I fell into acute depression, alcoholism, and increased my drug use. I had multiple adulterous affairs with depravity of all sorts. I had a drive for money and power. I felt the more wealthy and powerful I became, the more distance I could put between me and my past. The reality was, one year later when she became pregnant, this time it was my child, I viciously dragged her to an abortuary that she went running out of. I thought she was lying about being pregnant. The reality was I did not want to share or sacrifice anything, my time, my money, with anyone, not even a baby. I remember that day the mortuary was packed with women. She was crying. I did not react. When the baby was dead, I dropped her to her townhouse, returned to my house, and asked my wife what was for dead. I tried to pretend that everything was normal, but it wasn't long after that before I hit rock bottom and checked myself into a rehab center. When I was released, I knew that I needed more help. I immediately went to confession with a Catholic priest. It took three consecutive days to complete my confession. But I Rosa, I'm going to have to cut you off, but thank you for sharing your story with us. If I recall, there was a young man who testified earlier whose name was Rosa. Was That's my son, Daniel. You are to be complimented. Yeah. On, a, an, on an awesome son, and thank you for being here today. Ms. Ballard? My name is Vivian Ballard. I'm from Austin, Texas. My family is old Texas. Our two children are seventh generation Texans. Their great, 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 great grandfather helped draft and sign the Texas Declaration of Independence. And I believe that great grandfather Colin McKinney is spinning in his grave today because of this grossly intrusive and potentially harmful legislation facing Texas families. Conversation and publicity regarding SB1 and HB2 are focused on abortions. Lost in this froth are facts such as the very real possibility that people who will never need abortions will negatively be affected by this legislation. Medical conditions such as endometriosis, incomplete miscarriages, and uterine polyps all require skilled doctors. Where will women go if they don't live near a major metropolitan center? Where will they go for pap smears, cancer screenings, and yes, birth controls to help avoid abortions? The TMA opposes this legislation because they believe it is harmful to their patients. Doctors learn medicine so that they can treat patients. Legislators don't. Otherwise, we wouldn't be hearing that rape kits clean a woman out. Please, let's keep government and bad science out of the examining room. Also lost in the froth is how far the legislature has strayed with these special sessions. Special sessions are for emergency matters. Medical treatment, including abortions, have been happening safely in these clinics for decades. There is no emergency. Legislative rules made 
made such legislation unlikely in the regular session, but the Lieutenant Governor can simply change the rules to support his agenda in a special session. A special session, by the way, for which we, the citizens of Texas, are putting the bill to the tune of about a million dollars per session. Across the country, similar bills are popping up in state legislatures, and this is no coincidence. It is calculated and an ideological effort with no basis as an emergency for Texas. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Thompson? Um, hi, I'm Michelle Thompson, and I'm from Austin, Texas. Uh, Donald Campbell is my senator. Um, I'm just going to speak from the heart here. Um, I have a degree in microbiology. I worked my way through college. I was really excited about my first job. Um, went to work for a lab in Houston and unfortunately found out they were using human embryonic tissue. Um, I quit my job, and I never went back to micro. I couldn't do that. But this isn't about me. This is about all these babies that are being brutally killed. And the, the evidence shows that these children at 20 weeks gestation, they have pain. You know, they have a lot of pain. And, you know, doctors even use, you know, um, you know anesthesia on these babies when they happen to do surgery on them. Um, it, it, and when I talk about pain, I'm talking about excruciating pain because from what I understand, you know, when we fall down and hurt ourselves or we cut off a foot or an arm or a leg, our body's going to shock and this helps blunt the pain, the trauma. But these babies haven't developed to that point yet. So not only do they feel pain, but they feel excruciating pain. That's my understanding. Um, you know, I, I don't know how brutal we can get. This is just brutal, you know, tearing babies limb from limb. And I'm not a speaker. I don't like to get up and talk in front of people. I really had to really push myself to do this. But honest to God, this is really brutal stuff, people. And what are we made of? Are, are we a, a Germany of Holocaust? I mean, and even Germany doesn't do this for crying out loud. Germany limits it to 12 weeks, Sweden 18 weeks, you know, uh, Norway 12 weeks. You know, what have we become? America used to be the people that came to the rescue, and now we need rescuing. You know, and we're not asking you to um, give up abortion. We're asking you to, to decide on abortion before five months, before these babies feel all this horrible Thank pain. You, your time's up. Julie Klaschnick. Honorable committee members, thank you for letting me speak. My name is Julie Klaschnick, and I live in Austin, Texas. I'm a constituent of Mr. Watson. I oppose SB1 and I am representing myself as a Texas woman. I am afraid. If these laws are enacted, I am afraid for the women of Texas who will be plunged into the horrors of back alley and cross-border abortion providers. I am afraid for the women who will consult Dr. Google as their best option in a time of crisis. I am afraid for the doctors and the hospitals that will have to clean up Dr. Google's mess and the women who won't make it to the emergency room in time. I am afraid of what has been done to the pursuit of truth and the violations of democracy that I have seen happen right here in this very building. I am also afraid that some committee members are hard of hearing because I have witnessed in these many hearings compelling factual reality-based testimony from doctors, social workers, academic researchers, real Texas women and all manner of experts testify over and over and over again that these burdensome laws are not needed or wanted by the majority of Texans. These laws will hurt real Texans in real ways, but too many members in both houses are deaf to real facts instead choosing to play top politics with my rights. This is about real lives, the lives of the already born women. These laws won't reduce abortion in Texas. These laws will reduce safe abortions in Texas. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you were Ms. Pushing. Derek Rich? My name is Derek Rich. I'm from Bernie, Texas. Hello, Ms. Campbell. Thank you. Dr. Campbell, excuse me. Thank you for speaking out on Fox News for everything you've done, ma'am. The reason this bill affects me is because of several aspects. One is those pair of shoes right there. I was one of those who get to speak. Thank goodness, here's before 1973. I was adopted and given to two beautiful people to be able to live on this earth, especially in the great state of Texas. I was married to a woman 
my first wife, that is. And I participated in an abortion at that time. And here's the thing I keep remembering. I didn't get a choice. I was the man of the house, but she said it's my buddy. That was half my child. I did not get a choice. I want y'all to look at all this, at all the pain that's in this room today. Abortion causes pain for men and women. My friend Mr. Rosa here. It causes so much internal pain. It's just like the people in the shootings going on now. There's internal pain that it causes. For anybody to deny that is to lie to yourself. We are a country, a nation that is great, not because of our laws. It's because in God we trust. Simple fact. If we get back to the basics of why we are here and why this pain is causing us, I guarantee you that if you pass this, it's going to cure more problems than it's causing. I stand to you today with one other thing. The reason you don't see an overwhelming amount of research for the pain and turmoil of abortion is because mostly, most of your pro-life organizations and churches are taking in all these things. They're the ones standing and helping the people that's torn apart put themselves back together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rich. Amy Donovan? Yes, hi. Um, I actually am representing Mary Colonane, who had to leave, so I'm reading her testimony. Okay. Thank you, Senator Nelson and committee, for reading my testimony. I am a constituent of Senator Kirk Watson, and I'm writing to express my opposition to Senate Bill 1. It is a dangerous bill and will only serve to harm the women of Texas. I am old enough to know women who went to Mexico to obtain abortions in the 60s and who came back with infections. One had to be hospitalized. I myself lost a child to adoption before there were safe legal abortions in Texas. I would never do it again. I have also had an abortion and I have no regrets. I have tons of regret and grief over the loss of my child. We are on our way back to the days when women had little control over their lives or their bodies. I have been a women's health nurse practitioner for 29 years and I know that contraceptives fail, some men leave pregnant women, and some women have unprotected sex to survive and to take care of their kids. I know a patient who died after a septic abortion and left four school-age motherless children. Do you think they were easy to adopt? You can't make a blanket law that covers all situations. Indeed, you have no business passing any laws that restrict a woman's own decision-making. Let women make the choices that are right for them. If you really believe in small government, get out of these very private, very difficult family decisions. Thank you. Thank you. 